Hello everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates. We had seven drivers seeing action this weekend, so let's get started. Anthony Alfredo was at Kansas Speedway for the Bushy McBush Race 400 in his number 38 Dude Wipes Ford Mustang. Let's check in with Anthony for a post-race recap. About to board the plane to head home, but we had a great speed today at Kansas Speedway. Our Dude Wipes Ford Mustang was probably one of the best cars we've had all year, so very thankful for the hard work of everyone at Front Row Motorsports to bring me a fast race car, step in the right direction. Hopefully we can keep that up. We had some misfortune on pit road after running in the top 20 all day long and probably having a shot at top 15, but we'll keep working hard, just keep digging, taking it one race at a time, uh, do all we can so that uh, the results come our way. It's all you can do. I'm very thankful for everyone who supports us, and I'm excited for the next one. Up next for Anthony, Darlington Raceway this weekend. My favorite race of the year featuring throwback paint schemes. Anthony will run the 1985 Hardy's paint scheme of Alan Kowicki. Green flag drops Sunday at 3.30 Eastern Time, live on FS1. Sheldon Creed was also at Kansas Speedway for the Wise Power 200, where he started eighth and moved into second on lap one. Sheldon took the lead for the first time on lap 12. He finished third in both the first and second stages, led a total of 41 laps before getting into the wall as a result of a loose wheel. And the GMS team was forced to make additional stops after a fender rub cut down a right rear tire. Sheldon finished 32nd, but still holds fourth in points heading into this weekend's throwback race at Darlington. Sheldon will pay tribute to Jason Leffler's 2002 ASE paint scheme. Catch again all the action Friday night, 7.30 Eastern Time on FS1. Connor Mozak finished up the Trans Am TA2 West Swing at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. Connor started the race in six was running in the top five before contact with another car sent him off track. Connor finished 23rd, but felt that the car had good speed and looked forward to carrying that speed to Lime Rock Park on May 31st. Connor has three top four finishes and five starts so far this year. Up next for Connor, Dover International Speedway for his ARCA debut on May 14th. Jesse Love was at Circuit of Americas for round two of the TC America series. Jesse did not have an ideal weekend, but felt they learned a lot and received valuable track time for the future. The Toyota 86 was fast all weekend, but luck just wasn't on their side. In race number one, Jesse started at the back, drove up to a top five finish in a rain shortened race. The conditions did not favor the rear wheel drive Toyotas as most of the field were front wheel drive cars and definitely had an advantage in the rain. Race number two, Jesse started fifth and was battling for third when contact with another car tripped and disabled the ABS component on the brakes, taking him out of the race. Up next for Jesse, this weekend at Nashville Fairgrounds with Wimmer Motorsports and the number 21 Super Late Model. Jake Bowman was making his fourth start in the SRL Pro Late Model Series at Stockton 99 Speedway. Jake qualified in the 10th position and brought home an 11th place finish. Up next for Jake, SRL Pro Late Models at All-American Speedway on May 22nd. Brody Moore made his Super Late Model debut at Colorado National Speedway where he qualified sixth but had to start in the back due to being a rookie. Brody then raced his way to a top 10 finish in eighth. Up next for Brody, 5150 Junior Late Models at Madera Speedway on May 22nd. Gavin Graham was at Mobile International Speedway for the reopening of that famed half mile in his number 38 Kurt Britt Motorsports Chevrolet. Gavin sat on the top of the speed charts all day and kept that momentum up by parking it in victory lane, barely beating John Heil to the finish line for the win. Up next for Gavin, Five Flag Speedway Pro Trucks on May 14th. Carter Whalen made his trip from Georgia to Nashville, Tennessee to make his first start at Music City Quarter Midget Track 
all in preparation for a regional race at the end of the month. Carter finished second in both heavy Honda and heavy 160. Let's get a quick race recap from the driver. Hey guys, we just got back from Music City Quarter Midget Association in Nashville, Tennessee. Had a great time learning the track. After strong performance in the heat race, we ended up starting third in the A main. We ran good in the A main and ended up finishing second in the heavy 160. We started second in the A main and finished second in the A main. Can't say enough about our sponsors. Huge thank you to the Little Speed Shop, the Cox family, David Medina Photography, Mark Tuggle RV, Conquest Strategic Marketing. Next race we'll, we will be at is the Albuquerque, New Mexico Na USAC National Race. Up next for Carter, USAC Quarter Midget Nationals in Albuquerque, New Mexico on May 21st through the 23rd. Other drivers seeing action this weekend include Joey East, who will return to the Arkham Menards East Series at Nashville Fairgrounds on Saturday. Joe Valento heads to Ace Speedway for round four of the Cars Tour on Friday. Caden Honeycutt also returns to the Cars Tour at Ace Speedway on Friday. And Cassidy Hines will be at Colorado National Speedway for the first pro truck race of the year. That's it for this week's Race Face Driver updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up on raceface.tv on demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.